Hi, my name is Jay Joseph, and I'm sending out a big hello to Newham Libraries because I'm here today on behalf of them and the Summer Reading Challenge. My first book, Fireboy, is part of the Silly Squad. And I want you out there to take part in many of the fabulous activities the Summer Reading Challenge is organizing. Now, the Silly Squad, if you want to take part and read, the way to find out is to go online to summerreadingchallenge.org.uk and you'll see some of the incredible books on there, all of them funny, and so many wonderful activities which you can do right here at Newham Library. Now, I'm here today, of course, to tell you about my book, Fireboy. Lovely cover, isn't it? Now, Fireboy is a funny story about a boy called Agent Sweeney who can burst into flames, right? Think about it. Pretty amazing, isn't it, right? True, it makes buttoning your shirt a little difficult if your hands are on fire, but that's part of the story. Now, you say to me, Jay, that sounds a little different. How is it that you can suddenly burst into flames? Well, it's because he gets a very special parcel on day one. And it's right there at the very beginning. Let me read it to you right here. Brace yourselves. It's really good. And my novel starts with a quiz. It's very easy. Don't worry. One. You are handed a box marked Top Secret. The box is addressed to you. Do you A. Rip it open or B. Wait for your parents to come home before unwrapping it. If you'd answered A, proceed to the next question. If you'd answered B, start again. The correct answer is A. Inside the box, you find a jar of sweets and an information booklet. The sweets are labeled nature's own and smell of peppermint. The information book is 48 pages long. Do you A, open the jar of sweets or B, Read page after boring page from the booklet. If you'd answered A, proceed to the final question. If you'd answered B, take a deep breath and read question two again, then answer A. Three, you discover the sweets unleash a molecular chain reaction. It results in you developing extraordinary powers. Do you A, run amok cause havoc at school and join the circus, or B, master your power, dedicate yourself to a life of public service, and become the warrior hero our world so desperately needs. If you've answered A, read on. If you've answered B, seriously? B again? It seems you haven't yet twigged how this quiz works. The correct answer is A. No one masters a power from the off. But do not worry, my friend. Help is waiting for you within these very pages. So carry on and pay close attention. My name is Aidan Sweeney, and I am Fireboy. It began with a doorbell. I was not long in from school. Lemon was curled beside me on the sofa, one white paw tucked under her chin, her tail flung lazily over a cushion. The two of us had the room to ourselves. Mum wouldn't be home for ages, and Granny was in her room, snoring like a bear. That was when the doorbell buzzed. Lemon yawned and rolled over. I sat up. It buzzed again. This time, a voice from the intercom followed. I have a special delivery for an A. Sweeney. A. Sweeney? A special delivery for me? The voice spoke again. I need you to sign for it. I bolted off the sofa, hurled the stool, and skidded to a halt of the doorway. I'll be right down, I yelled into the speaker. Fizzing with excitement, I ran into the hall and pressed the button for the lift. And yet, it was hard not to be suspicious. Who could have sent me a parcel? No one had mentioned a present to me, and my birthday wasn't until May. As I rode down to the ground floor, I mulled over the possibilities and weighed their odds. Mum. Unlikely. Mum believed in rewards, not surprises. None of my most recent accomplishments, coming third in the longest spit contest, or beating Hussein not once, but twice. 
<laughs> at FIFA on his own Xbox fell into her achievement category. Granny. Hardly. Granny didn't do presents. Granny gave orders. She issued threats and restricted privileges. She handed out punishments like they were fairy cakes at a party. Granny buy me a present? Not a chance. Mitchell Mulch, the favorite. This fell into the it's a trick category. Could Mitchell Mulch be hiding in the bushes with a super soaker double pump AK-47 attack gun? Very possibly. This delivery person in the surrounding area must be approached with great caution. Or, it was my lucky day. The long shot. Fingers crossed. I burst into the lobby and spotted a thin man in cycling shorts outside the glass partition. He had a delivery box strapped to his, box, to his back and a smallish parcel in one hand. A bicycle leaned against the wall behind him. My heart went pitter-patter, pitter-patter. This was no trick. This was real. I rushed to the door and opened it. I'm Aiden Sweeney. We just spoke on the intercom. The delivery man frowned. Instead of handing me the parcel, he pulled it away. I was expecting someone older. I made myself as tall as I could, which, in fairness, wasn't that tall. I happen to be much older than I look, my good man, I said in a deep voice. If you check the box, you'll discover there's my name on the label. I don't know, he said, scratching his chin. Do you have any ID? Just this, I said. Removing one of my trainers, I showed him its heel where the name A. Sweeney was written in a black marker. He held the train gingerly, his nose wrinkling. Guess that'll do, he shrugged. Here. I scratched my name across his electronic pad and he handed me the package. It was an odd-shaped lump wrapped in brown paper. Postmax blotted at one corner and rows of blue airmail stickers credited another. One stamp showed the llama in profile, the second two ponies on a grassy mountaintop. The handwriting I didn't recognize, a scrawled loops and purple biro, but the address was mine. Alexandria Apartments, London, N1. Do you know who sent this? I asked the delivery old man, but when I looked up, he had already cycled away. In his place was a girl in a maroon blazer and straw boater. Sadie was home. And that is the opening to this book. Bet you want to hear more, eh? Well, briefly, what happens is this. Inside those parcels, inside those suites, there is a secret potion. And inside that, it turns Aiden and his friends into soup. It turns out they, they develop superpowers. His friend Hussein can control electricity and computers. His friend Sadie is telekinetic. She can move things with her mind. And Aiden, of course, learns how to burn and a lot of funny things happen if you want to find out you're gonna to have to pick it up and read so do that it would make me so very happy now just standing here talking into my camera about me sounds a little boring. So what I've done is I've gotten some questions, which on my very last school visit I did long ago, back when we can go into schools. And I have here eight questions which children asked me. And I thought these are the sort of things that most people would like to know. So I'm going to read out the questions and answer them as best I can. So I hope you're okay with that. All right, let's see. Number one. Did you always want to be a writer? Well, yes, yes, I did actually. I always enjoyed reading and writing. It was my favorite things to do. Now, what kind of writer I wanted to be, that changed a lot over, over time. I mean, when I was younger, I thought of myself as writing for adults. It was only when I got a lot older and had my own children that I thought I really wanted to write for children. Uh, my daughter and my sons were children about the time Harry Potter came out and also Northern Lights Philip Pullman books if you know those and they really kind of transformed the possibilities for what books can do for children and because I teach in schools because I've been a teacher I teach primary school um, it, it made me think that you know really what I'd like to do is learn to write from them now you're probably listening to me and going hey you know he sounds a little funny well you're right actually I'm I am American so a lot of it too was 
am I writing for American boys and girls? Am I writing for English boys and girls? Who am I writing for? Right? It doesn't really, really matter. And so it also took a little bit of time for me to find out my voice. And my voice now is because I've been in England now for over 30 years is, is kind of English, even though I know it doesn't really sound that way. Anyway, let's go on to question two. Question two, how much money do you make? Right, well, we're not pulling any punches there, are we, my friends? This is this kind of comes up quite a bit. How much money? Not enough is really the answer to that, particularly when bookshops aren't open, right? But uh, it's not about, it's not about money, really. I mean, I'm in school, so it's, it's about children reading. It's about having readers. That's why libraries are great. I don't care. Buying the book, if you can, fantastic. But you can go to a library and read it, that's even better. And if you're not going to read my book, read another book. It's all that matters really is reading. Right? But if you, if you want to get really rich, I don't want to really go into writing books. You know? Number three, where do you write? Where do I write? Well, I actually write right here in this, this glorious garret on the top of Joseph Mansions. This is my little room. I've given all the bedrooms downstairs belong to my children. I get the one up on top. And I, I like to write here. I, I, I like uh, closed places. I like being near the roof. Um, and I like writing, well, I, I, you know, some people say they can write anywhere. Well, not me, actually. I, I like to write here. I like the need to write at a desk. And I usually write off a laptop. I do sometimes a lot of scrap work writing in books and occasional drawings. Not too much. But for the most part, nearly always on a laptop right here in my little, little study. Question four. How long did it take you to finish Fireboy? You know, it, it took me a long time. I, I, it took me about 18 months, I think, to finish it. I got the first idea for it. I did a course to learn how to be a better writer at Batspaw University, which is, I live in Bristol, so it's near here. And uh, as part of that course, you had to try and write a novel. So I, that novel turned out to be Fireboy. So I started it there and um, but it went through a lot of different rewrites. The thing about writing novels, you tend to think of it just being one long story. It doesn't really work out that way. It's a lot of little stories that get changed and changed a lot when you give them to an agent, when you give them to a publisher, and they kind of move along and transform itself. So about 18 months or so, a lot of changes. But the, the start, the bit I read to you, has been nearly always the same from the start. That, that, that has been the one thing that stayed the same. Question five. What's the best part of being a writer? Well, I have to say, my book has come out during lockdown, so I really haven't gone to bookshops and done signings, or I haven't done a lot of the events. I haven't been able to get out to schools and um, sh tell children about my book or read to them uh, very much. And so that part of it, I haven't experienced too much because it is my friend. I know you look at these gray and white hairs, you think, gosh, I must have written hundreds of books. No, that's not true. Um, but I would have thought for me the best part about reading is just hearing children laugh uh, and enjoy the stories. Uh, you get a few children and their moms or dads might write back and do reviews, and they really do mean a lot because, um, especially right now, because we don't get to meet people face to face so much. It's the only thing that kind of keeps you going. So hearing people laugh, that's the best part, for me anyway, hearing me, or that they, they, they enjoy the story. Six, how do you write a book? Well, I think what you mean there isn't so much, obviously, with a pen or a, a laptop, but it's more about the stages it goes through. Uh, basically what happens is if you're thinking out there writing your own book, you write it out, and then... For me, what I did is I found someone called an agent. And an agent is someone who kind of takes your book and then goes to publishers for it. And they know how that works. And your agent also will take your book and try and make it more um, sellable. You know, they'll make it, you know, what's attractive about it. And they'll help you a lot. And they'll do a lot of work that way. Then they take it to a publisher. And there's a lot of different publishers. And then editors there will take your book and again read through it and suggest some changes everyone's trying to make it better right? trying to make it as good as they possibly can and what happens i think along the way is when i'm writing i'm just thinking about a story but as it goes along the chain they're thinking more about what type of children would like this or what type of readers would like this
this. And that's what changes and it transforms the story a little bit as you go through. But there are a lot of steps into it. But the whole cover and illustrations, and which are so important, aren't they? Right? I mean, great covers and illustrations can make a book. They come strangely right at the very end, unless, uh, unless you can draw, which I don't. But for the most part, they come right at the very end. It's amazing, isn't it? You know, they're so important, and yet, but just at the end. Question seven. Who is your favorite character in Fireboy? Well, I have to say, I, and I do like them all. Um, Granny, who is a very kind of comical character, was a lot of fun to write. Because she is, she does funny things. So she's a bit, she's a bit aggressive. Um, but I like to write her, and I like Matilde. Matilde is a fortune teller uh, in the circus, but she's young. You know, not an old, old woman. You know, like you see in pictures sometimes with a crystal ball. Uh, but very young. She's a teenager. So I like her, uh, and of course Aiden is. Well, I, I like them all. They're all, they're all really good, actually. And my last question, is there a sequel? Well, I certainly hope so. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> I am writing it right here at this desk. You hear that tap, tap, tap is my laptop, which is right here beside me, which I, to be honest, I should be doing right now instead of talking to you. But um, yeah, hopefully a year from now, the summer, you'll see the sequel, what happens next. But to get to that, you got to read this book first. So why don't you? And now it's time for you, you, to get creative. That's right. I'm not doing the writing anymore. It's your turn to take over and do it right, yeah, if you like. So, I have an idea for you, which I'd like you to do. Now, if you're not one of those, you go, oh, I don't like to write stories. Uh, don't put that pen down. Don't go away. Don't turn that video off just yet. I'm not through talking. Yes, I mean you. That's right. I know you're out there. Just listen to what I gotta say first. I'm not asking you to write the whole story. What I'd like you to do is write the beginning, a bit like what I read at the start. And it's gonna be really similar to that. But I want you to come up with your own. So my idea for you is something called the parcel. Right? I'm gonna break it down in three steps. And again, all I want is the beginning of a story. You know, if you wanna finish the story and go on and write it, go ahead. But let's see if you can write a good beginning because a good beginning is a lot of fun makes a lot of difference to stories, trust me, okay? Now, you're gonna have three parts to this prompt, three parts. And the first one is going to be the parcel itself, right? Okay, now, in my story, a delivery man came with it for Aiden. He wasn't expecting it, and suddenly came, and on it, it was had brown paper and all sorts of strange stamps. Now, in your story, how do you get your parcel? And it doesn't have to be a parcel. It could be, you know, maybe you're on a bus and someone leaves a suitcase, right? And, and that suitcase inside, maybe you hear it rattling or something like that, something strange. Or maybe you're just kind of walking down the street and bang, something hits you in the back of the head. You're like, oh, oh what was that? And it's a bag and inside it, speckled color. Or maybe you go swimming, and as you're going swimming through the swimming pool, lake, whatever it is you're going swimming, you go, and bang, you put it to something, and there it is. There's a, par a parcel, a box, something, anything like that. So, you're going to find a box, parcel, could be a postman, someone, however you get it. So that's number one. What is it? What do you find? Okay? okay. Have a little think about it right now. What is it going to be? Okay? Super. Two. Number two is build suspense, right? We want to write good stories. So instead of you just kind of going, oh, it's a box and inside it was a little guy and he started talking to me and offered me a wish. No, 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 no. When you get this, if you get a suitcase, if you find something in the swing pool, something hits you on top of the head, I want you to describe it. I want you to tell me what it is what type of a box it is. If it's something you get through the post, what sort of stamps, envelopes it comes through. If it's a suitcase, what the suitcase looks like. If it is this kind of strange shaped box, how is it strangely shaped? What is there different about it? Build suspense. That way, we, the readers, the people who are writing for it, listen to this and think, oh my God, what's inside this box? What's happening? What's 
spots in this bar, so it must be something interesting. He's taking so much care of writing about it. It must be really interesting. So take your time. Think about what it could be. Build suspense. Describe it. Make it really interesting. Okay? And number three is then you just want to open it. Now, you don't have to. You can hint at what's inside it, or you can tell us. Right? Now, in my story, it was just a jar of sweets. Now, they smelled beautiful, didn't they? You know, peppermint and all that. But still, that will lead on to something else. So, in yours, what do you find? Inside the suitcase, is it maybe a, a costume? And when you put the costume on, something strange happens. Or maybe inside the swimming pool, as you're going through it, you find something in a float, right? And inside the float, maybe there's some fins. And when you put on those fins, suddenly you can turn into a fish or a mermaid or something. I don't know, or something like that, right? So there's something kind of incredible. So think about it before you create a poem. Now, you can write this story out. You can do it in pictures. You can do it on a storyboard. You can do whatever you like. So that's my idea for you to get out there and write some stories. And, and if you like, you know, get them to Newham Library and get them over to me because I will write back to you and tell you what I think, which will, I'm pretty sure will be a big thumbs up. But I will try and help as much as I can because reading is fabulous, but so is writing. And it's really important. And I know everyone, not everybody, I want to want to write novels. It's practice. It's a way about getting good at it. And it's about, it's about entertaining your friends, if nothing else. So, the parcel. Good idea, get riding.